Now for more on the G20 summit, let's go over to Elvis. Now, Rene, as China assumes leadership in the grouping, Beijing wants a greater role for Africa and the developing world in the G20. When China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, spoke in Hangzhou summit in May, he made it clear that Beijing intends to cooperate with other G20 countries to deliver 10 outcomes. Now, for more on the story in our Pretoria studios, we are joined by Dr. Emmanuel Owuso Esukere, the Chief Research Specialist in the African Institute of South Africa Unit of the Human Sciences Research Council. Dr. A very good morning to you and welcome. Well, good morning to you and welcome to your viewers as well. Uh, first and foremost, Dr. Tell us why is the G20 summit so important for the African continent? Well, first of all, the G20 countries account for 85% of global GDP. 80% of international trade and 67% of uh, the global population. And therefore, any discussions between them in terms of the global economy and, and, and the way forward has direct implications for international economic cooperation, development, and growth. And that impacts on Africa and any other continent for that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi spoke in the Hangzhou summit in May, and he, he said, and I quote, uh, one of the focuses on Africa as the G20 hosts China is to initiate cooperation in support, uh, or to support, rather, industrialization of Africa and least developed countries. Now, close quote. Now, now that, that, must have been a, uh, that, that must have been a very encouraging uh, statement there for Africa and its development. Absolutely, you're right. Um, a number of expected outcomes were targeted for this summit. One of them was to coordinate efforts to assist Africa's industrialization. Um, at this juncture in Africa's development, the quest to industrialize our economies is our, is our main ob objective, to, to diversify economic structure and base from being primary commodity exporters to adding value through industrialization. And so this is a very welcoming uh, development, one of the benefits of the continent as a whole. Another benefit closely related to this is the issue of structural reform. To be able to industrialize, we need to uh, reallocate resources from low productivity sectors to high product productivity sectors. And the, the summit looked at um, identifying priority areas, um, guide, designing guiding principles, and also an index system, system for, for measuring progress over time. Uh, in terms of assisting Africa's industrialization, um, they, 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 the, the aspirations do that through capacity building, uh, targeted investments, and infrastructure development. Now, infrastructure development is very key to Africa's industrialization, and Africa's in, uh, infrastructure deficit is very well documented, and it is very crucial to the continent to be able to industrialize and also link up to regional value chains and global value chains as well. Uh, talking about those value chains, and of course, uh, when we talk export and import, Doctor, there was always uh, this thing that people said there's a, a mismatch in terms of the equilibrium between China and the African continent where they take our resources and we don't necessarily benefit from it. What's your take on that? Well, there has been, uh, there has been some concerns raised in terms of the balance of the, the relationship between Africa and China. Uh, even where there is foreign direct investment from China, they come with their own workers. It's like the, the, the fund just goes back to them again. Um, they assist, the economic relationship with Africa has been in the past mainly focused on economic resources in, in exchange for infrastructure development and other types of assistance. It's up to African leaders to decide how to rebalance that equation in the interest of the, of, of the continent. Mm -hmm. Now, South Africa is the only African country who's a member of the G20. Is that membership enough, uh, Doctor, to represent the interests of the entire continent, or should there be more? Well, South Africa actually does its best, as always, all the time. But you'd agree with me that it's a very tall order to represent 54 countries in addition to pursuing your own uh, aspirations and goals as well. Mm -hmm. So what the summit usually does is that it invites additional developing countries as well. Uh, so this year, Senegal was there, Egypt was there, and Chad was there as well. I'm sure the African Union was there as well, and Nepal as well, to beef up the Af Africa's representation and also support South Africa in advocating Africa's, Africa's concerns on relevant issues. Now, China being a strategic partner for Africa was also going to ensure that Africa is represented in most of the key deliberations at the summit. Mm -hmm. and, and what sort of benefits, uh, Dr. Might South Africa and the rest of Africa reap uh, if uh, SMMEs uh, were better integrated into global and regional value chains, you think? Well, first, if you look at the G20 countries, SMEs account for over 50% of GDP growth and uh, roughly 75% of job creation. So the benefits are real. Uh, within the African context, we we'll probably also say that it will help to reduce poverty 
and, and mitigate our stubbornly high unemployment rates. Mm -hmm. Doctor, I thank you so much for your time and joining us uh, on the line there from Pretoria. You're welcome and, and thanks for having me.